Hey, what's up and welcome back to the channel. This is How to Drum and Bass, which if you're new here is a channel where it's my mission to deconstruct what the top popular drum and bass artists are doing right now and to teach it to you so that you can improve your drum and bass production. And we've got something super exciting today because there's, there's a song that has just been stuck in my head for days now to the point where my girlfriend is a little bit annoyed that I keep whistling the tune. <laughs> and that song is Liquor and Cigarettes, Headex and Chase and Status and RD. Oh my God, such a sick song. Personally, I've been following Headex from the start. I saw his Rampage set live in 2018 and it was just mind blowing. So I've been a fan from, from the very beginning. And of course, Chase and Status are two absolute legends. So them coming out with a collaboration song was always gonna be extremely sick. And I did a couple shorts on how to recreate some of the sounds in that song and they were super popular. So I wanted to go ahead and make a full drop tutorial where I go through basically how to create the drop of the song because there's some really interesting sound design uh, in there that I think can be really cool for someone to watch to get some inspiration or to understand more about how some more complex stuff is done by big artists such as Hedex and Chase and Status. So yeah, without further ado, let's dive in. Oh, just a small tip. Of course, we're gonna recreate everything here in the video, but if you just wanna be faster and you wanna download the presets, they are available for free. I'll put a link down in the description so you can download them. Oh, and um, I would wear uh, actual headphones when designing something like this, mostly because the whoop, whoop, whoop sound has a lot of low end going on. I tested it out and if you're listening on your laptop speakers or you just your shitty headphones, uh, it doesn't sound as great. So put on some headphones. All right, let's 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 get into it. All right, let's 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 get into it. All right, so we are in Ableton right now and uh, you can see the whole project here. I've just uh, collapsed all these channels so you can kind of see an overview. It's actually not all that complicated. There's not that much stuff going on. And the finished product sounds like this. Switch. <laughs> Right, so pretty cool, right? So let's get going. Just for reference, I've included the original clip here. We're gonna be referencing the original sound to what we're making. And uh, just as a quick overview, what we're gonna talk about today is we're gonna, we're gonna see what they did with the drums. That's not all that complicated, uh, making that pretty simple today. Then we're gonna look at the brass part of it. So that's gonna be the really brassy tuba trumpety kind of sound that's, uh, that's here in the beginning. Uh, it's almost like a, yeah, it's almost like a brass quartet or lots of instruments playing at the same time. So we're gonna we're gonna cover that, and then after that first brass, actually the the timbre of the sound changes and it becomes more like an FME lead, and that's uh, that's the other thing that we're gonna have a look at. So first, yeah, just listening to that original sound again, you have switch. like instruments really, and then you know he even says switch. It goes. Uh, into a more FME sound like this, right? So it's uh, it's a more dirty, more gritty, and uh, that's that's a, that's a different uh, instrument that we're going to create today. Then, um, yeah, there's a pretty good sub bass in here that we're uh, that we're going to have a look at, and of course, uh, we're going to listen to this this very sick sound that Headex also uses in some of his other dubs, and uh, and of course, uh, my home is the rave, which uh, which is the the whoop 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 sound. So that's somewhere around here, right? <laughs> that sound. So that's that. And then of course, we're going to have the vocals. I, uh, I split the vocals uh, from the original song just for the sake of this tutorial. And then last but not least, just really quickly, there, uh, there's some effects, there's a cymbal crash, and there's uh, some noise sweep they're going to talk about. All right, so the first part, let's talk about the drums. Now, let's listen to what the drums sound like on the original track. So let me just solo this again. <laughs> Okay, so we can hear that the kick is a very thumpy kick. It's like doonch, doonch, doonch. It's almost like uh, like someone's knocking on a, on a wooden door or something like that. So we're gonna be looking for a kick that, that sounds like that. We're just gonna get samples for now and, and do a, a tiny bit of processing because we wanna keep it simple. But we're gonna be looking for a, a doonch kick. And so the snare <laughs> is a really slappy snare like tsh, tsh, almost like a, like somebody's whipping you. So it's got a specific kind of timbre. It's, it's quite loud. So we're gonna be looking for that as well. And then if you hear closely, you can hear a top loop 
kind of symbol, uh, like lots of symbols, like sort of on the top of that. It's like, uh, you know, someone's doing the, the symbol thing, whatever that's called. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so, uh, so we're going to be looking for that and um, uh, a crash sound going on. So you can hear it on that first page. It's like a crash light. So we're going to look at that. So for the kick, for this recreation, I could get away just getting samples from Splice. And you can probably figure this out on your own. But one thing that I like to do when I look for samples is also include the term DNB. So I'm searching for a drum and bass kick right now. The reason for that is that not all samples are suitable for drum and bass production. The reason for that is uh, there's, there's a beautiful video out by someone that I can't remember that shows when you use, for example, house samples to make a drum and bass beat or drum and bass samples to make a trap beat, for example, it sounds terrible because they all have different lengths. They have different timbres, they have different ADSRs. Um, so just if you're gonna look for samples, the, the, the way to make it easiest on yourself is to look for someone who's already shaped the sound in the way that belongs to the genre. In drum and bass, everything's quite short. It's a high BPM, things are happening very fast. Um, so you don't wanna go and get these like elongated kicks from like trap or get these like, uh, you know, these really hard hitting intense hi-hats from a house sample or something like that. So we're looking for a thumpy kick, right? So you only see from the names that, you know, there's something like that. So yeah, this one you could probably use. I just went down, I, I tested tested out a couple things. Just listen to this one. And actually, I think this sounds really good. So I took this one. And then for the snare, I, I kind of did the same thing. Kick was pretty easy because it's just the thumpy kick. The snare has a more refined timbre. So yeah, just again, just look in the samples for, for something that resembles the timbre and that you can do some processing on to make it more exactly like that. Maybe that, mm, no. I need something really slappy, so. See, this sounds pretty close to it. Yeah, I think, I think we're gonna use that. <coughs> so I just made a little drums group here. Uh, got the kick, got the snare, got the top loop, crash cymbal. For the top loop and the crash cymbal, very honestly, uh, I just grabbed a random loop. This is how, what it sounds like by itself. I also found it just by looking on Splice for top loops. And for crashes, honestly, you can literally use anything that even remotely sounds like it because it's just noise, basically. I found this one. It's not even a drum and bass sample, but it just sounded, it sounded like, nice like an organic sample. That's what I wanted for this. And so one thing you might notice is that I'm actually using a MIDI channel here rather than audio. I used to always use audio, but, uh, but I was convinced to switch to MIDI after finding this really sick Ableton Live device. I don't know if this exists for any other DAWs out there, but I'm using Ducks Buddy nowadays. If you look, for example, here on, uh, on the lead, I've got Duck Buddy on here and it's a MIDI sidechain plugin or not a plugin, it's an Ableton Live device. And it's just beautiful. You have extreme control over the sidechaining this way and it just makes everything sound a lot better. I could explain way more about Duck Buddy, but I think this is beyond the scope of this video. But, but just type into YouTube Duck Buddy review and you will see everybody raving about it. It is really fantastic. On the MIDI channels here, I just put the, the sounds into this simpler. In case of all the samples, I, I had to increase the volume here a bit because it came in pretty soft. But other that I didn't really change anything. And then listening to the original song, we see that there's a couple of these cymbal crashes happening here. So yeah, for example, at that first beat, that ding, for that extra impact, you hear it twitch. And you hear ch. That's actually a white noise riser. We'll look at that in a minute. Whenever there's a white noise riser, it also sounds great to add another crash in here. So we've just added crashes here on that first beat. So here, and as soon as the drop happens, you know, after this first section of the drop, we introduce it again. And so as for the structure of the drums, what pattern they're playing, it's actually just a very simple drum and bass pattern. So it's just... <laughs> it's just, just a normal drum and bass pattern. Nothing crazy going on there. So we can keep it pretty simple. So all we have is the kick here on one and on 1.35, between 1.3 and 1.4. And just repeat that over and over again. And the snare, as always, is just every time on the second beat. So on... 0.2 and on 0.4 and together it sounds just the drums it sounds like this quite catchy nice and snappy it's got that sort of more clappy feel that happens a lot in jump up drum bass right now so one thing to note also about the drums is we lose some of the drums around this this second drop area here what you can hear is in the first dun 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 dun, dun by the brass section there's only one kick in the beginning see so just and then dun 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 but actually the emphasis on the kick is in the second drop, which you can hear, you can hear kicks on every single hit. Dun, 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 dun. See, so we add some extra kicks here on those beats and you can just do that by here, but here is the MIDI if you uh, 
if you feel like you want to copy that. And we have one more symbol crash here that sort of sets the ambience for that quieter part. The top loop uh, cuts out and the snares cut out as well. Uh, but all that we have is this symbol crash here that sort of fills up that emptiness. No. Nope. There's kind of a droning thing in the background. I've just filled that with a symbol crash here. All right, so that was the drums. Next, let's talk about that first section, the horn part. So once again, just soloing the original song, it sounds like this. And so it sounds like there's a lot of brass going on. And what I mean by brass is horns, trumpets, uh, that, that kind of thing. So it's very likely that there's multiple things going on at the same time. And so what we're going to do is we're going to create a group where we're going to group several things. Now, first I tried to create sort of like a bass in Serum. You could probably omit this, but I just found that it added a little bit more body to, to the sound. And so all I really did was insert these notes into the MIDI player. So that's E1, 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 and then F1, and then going back to C. And make in Serum sort of like a distorted horn sound. It's very similar to uh, the horn sound that I made a short on a while ago that did very well, that you guys were very interested in. All right, so let's, let's take a look at how I made this sound. So I wanted to have some distorted kind of saw wavy stuff with lots of harmonics in it. So I chose a BS1 subby saw and a BS2 filthy in oscillator A and B. Added some unison to both of them. How much is arbitrary, but I found that six and eight works pretty well. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to create a perfect fifth because I, I could hear in the sound that there was some of that going on so yeah, oscillator one at plus one octave and plus seven semitones and oscillator B at just normal settings. So very sawy, very dirty sawy. And we want to go ahead and filter and distort that to make it sound like a, like a, like a tuba, like a bass, like a heavy brass instrument. And so next to these two wavetables, I kind of wanted to add in just another saw sound to just make it sound a little bit more mono, a little bit more, a little bit more stable. So we basically have three saws going on here. One normal one and two dirty ones with unison. Also, I wanted to add some noise because that'll distort the sound a little bit more and just make it a bit more gritty. Uh, there's a lot of noise coming out one of those brass instruments because there's a lot of distortion going on through the shape of the instrument. So we're gonna add noise. I just chose AC hum and we put up the level uh, to, uh, to this level here. All right, so then we're gonna filter it. You're gonna get an MG low 18. You're gonna apply it to everything. And we're definitely gonna turn up the drive so that we get some more volume, some more distortion. We're gonna turn up the fat as well. And we're going to give it a little bit of resonance. Not too much. Uh, with no resonance, it sounds very flat. Uh, we don't want it to get that sweeping sound. We just want it to sound a little bit more juicy. So about 12, 13% is where I hit the sweet spot. All right. And then, of course, we need to modulate some things. So in envelope one, I made a shape like this. And essentially, that just gives a very short sound. And we're going to modulate the wavetable position of oscillator one just for a little bit of extra movement. Then in LFO one, we're going to make a shape like this sort of like an elongated shark fin. I'm gonna put it at a quarter note, put it on envelope mode, and we're gonna apply that to oscillator A's FM from B. So what that means is we're gonna do frequency modulation from B just to distort this sound even more. We're gonna apply LFO1 to that FM from B at a rate of 35. We're also gonna apply it to the wavetable position of oscillator two, once again, just to create some extra movement in the sound. And I also found that playing with the sync button changed the sound quite nicely. Just gave it a little bit more of that top end. You can just play around with that as you as you wish. I found 1.15 works works quite well. Just a quick side note, if you're trying to recreate and it doesn't sound exactly like it, but you've got all these steps down, I have some post-processing here. Uh, just a glue compressor and an OTT that I'll talk about in a minute, but that's why it might not sound exactly the same. And then another small touch that I like to add is in LFO2, I got this downward sloping sound at a pretty low rate. It was just some experimentation and I put it on the fine here just so, just to get a little bit of detune sound going on because once again, it's very distorted, right? The kind of thing that we're looking for. All right, then let's move on to effects. So we're definitely gonna distort this a lot. We're gonna just add tube distortion. We don't have to pre-filter it or nothing. Uh, we're just gonna add like 80% of tube distortion. I wanted to add some chorus just to make it sound more wider and a little bit more detuned to give it that distorted brass sound. Just um, play around with some of these settings. So distortion and chorus are necessary. I would say that everything else is optional. I tried adding some hyper to get it to sound a little bit wider. It didn't do the trick for what I wanted now, but it could sound cool. And I also tried to add an extra comb filter, which also sounded cool, but didn't really serve the timbre that I wanted at this particular point in time. But very cool things to experiment with. And I did add a little bit of reverb, which we do need, but which I decided to do in post-processing 
just to make it sound better and to be able to add reverb after all the post-processing that I was going to do. But really, all you need is this distortion and chorus. And we've got a sound that sounds like this. Just very distorted, very short. Then in post-production, I just added a few simple things. I added this MIDI shaper, which is almost like an envelope kind of thing. It allows you to shape the MIDI in a particular way. Just in this case, I wanted to make it shorter. I didn't want it to be that long. And I actually applied that to every single channel here, which I'll talk about in a minute. I like to use a utility to keep the bass mono, especially because we've got some detuned sounds going on at a lower frequency spectrum, just so we prevent some phasing. I added an OTT and I boosted the mids here, added a pretty aggressive glue compressor on a soft clip to make the sound more distorted. And then all I did is I added a utility here so that the whole sound, including the reverb, which is on the group channel here, uh, cuts out when the guy says, wait, because we need it to be completely quiet then. Okay, so we've got this now. It's good, but of course it definitely doesn't sound like the sound just yet. If we listen to the original sound, it sounds much fuller. It's got a lot more wideness going on. It's got a lot more top end going on. Maybe, you know, just we need to add some more instruments. So for this, I actually found this super cool free brass ensemble plugin. This plugin is called Sign Player. It is completely free and it's got this whole pack called Rotary for free in which you have all these big band instruments. So we've got trumpet, we've got a trombone, we've got a baritone, we've got a sax section, we've got a brass section, and you can actually play uh, many of them at the same time. I decided to split it out in my Ableton project because I just like doing that, but you could work completely just from one instance of this plugin. So I chose to use the brass section, which is a collection of instruments, and to add in some trumpets as well so that we can get a more fuller sound. So just using the same MIDI notes, and I added three more layers. I added a brass ensemble at a lower octave. I added a brass ensemble at a higher octave, and then I added a baritone, but I decided not to use that, but you could. So just using some lower octave MIDI notes, I added the brass section, which sounds like this. You can already hear that's much more organic and much nicer. And then I wanted to add some extra top end, so I used that same instrument, but just at a higher octave. And the reason I split it and then put the MIDI notes together is because I wanted this to be a little bit louder. And it sounds like this. I think that's what we were, what we were kind of missing. And so you could add any number of other instruments. I also tried to add this baritone, which is a lower sort of trumpet kind of instrument but I found that it didn't really add that much to the sound. So with this high brass, this low brass, and this uh, bass sound from Serum combined, we've actually got a really nice recreation of the original sound. The original sound sounds like this. And what we've got now, if we solo this brass group here, we've got this. Not exactly the same, but definitely coming pretty close. Also, it's worth noting that in the next sound, the frequency modulated lead that we're gonna talk about next, I found that there was a perfect fifth going on. And so I wanted to add some notes as well to these instruments here, uh, to the higher section, just to create some of that extra tonality to make the brassy sound in the beginning fit better together with the FME sound that comes in the drop. So I just added a perfect fifth here in these notes. So we've got that first note starting on A1, and then we've got that second note starting on E2, and they're essentially exactly the same after that. All right, so if we take that together with this uh, the cymbal crash and this single kick here and the drum pattern that we have so far, then we get this. By the way, if you want to solo two tracks at the same time, you press solo on one and then you use the command or the control key to solo the other group, and then they're both playing. So here we go. All right, so we're getting there. So, and in terms of post-processing for all these instruments, essentially what I did is I did the same thing that I did to the Serum patch. I added some utility to mono the bass. I added an OTT and I accentuated the frequencies that I thought sounded good, which is the same for every instrument, just with a little bit of extra mids here. So for the low brass quartet instrument, I cut out the low end because we already have low end from the Serum brass that we created. And once again, you can see this utility that later I'll show in automation quiets the volume when we need it to be quiet. For the high brass, almost the same thing. We cut out the low end, but we did keep the top end here. We wanted to have that top end. And that's really all there is to it. So one thing that I want to note is from this free plugin, these sounds are quite long and the original sound, it's quite short and stabby. So what I did is I added this MIDI shaper, which you can see here, instead of having the full note play, I let the volume drop so that we get a shorter sound. So instead of not having it on and having it be longer like this. Just makes it a little bit less messy. 
Also then last but not least, I found that to really get a nice tonality going, I wanted to add some reverb. Now I used EOS 2, which is probably my favorite reverb. It just sounds super delicious. Uh, but you can use, of course, any reverb that you want. Uh, I did, however, use a pretty short decay and just only a little bit of mix because the instruments on themselves actually already seem to have some reverb on them from this free plugin that we're using. And then lastly, I just wanted to add some extra top end. It's very simple, but I just found that it really added some character to the sound. Versus. It sounds more trumpety and more like full and like, mm. All right, so then let's look at this FM lead. And what I mean by FM is it's frequency modulated. It sounds like a lot of sort of newer style jump up slash dance floory basses. Soloed, it sounds like this. It's almost like a really dirty version of like trumpet bassy kind of sound that we had before, except it's more mono, uh, I think, and more gritty. So we're just using the same MIDI notes here as before in the, the brass quartet sound. So let's dive into Serum and see how I made this sound. So when we were working on the horns, we found actually that adding a perfect fifth gets us the tonality that we want. So we're going to do the same kind of approach right now. Uh, I started out with a BS2 Filthy, just like before, except no unison because we want the sound to be way more mono. And I added a basic MG, but I just changed the wavetable position. I changed the wavetable position here to 94 and an oscillator A to 199. And again, we're applying FM from B. So just so that we get that frequency modulated gritty sort of sound. Now, of course, we want to go ahead and filter that. MG low applying to both A and B, and we're going to modulate this cutoff and this drive. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to LFO 1 over here. We're going to make again this sort of shark finny shape that we did before, except now it's less elongated, it's more snappy. You see it goes down quicker. Still at a chord note, envelope mode on, and we're going to apply that to the cutoff and to the drive here. And note that the cutoff is gonna be going in two directions. And so it sounds like this. We wanna add some effects. We're gonna add some hyper just to make it sound more wide, add more voices to it. Got a rate of 40%, got a detune of 25% uh, and a mix of about 29. I found that that was really nice, a sweet spot. We're gonna add some heavy distortion. That's a really big part of this sound. Uh, I like to use the diode distortion since they're just like pretty fucking disgusting. It makes it just sound a lot more gritty. And again, we're gonna use LFO1 to apply to that drive so that it just changes more over time and gets grittier towards the end of the note. Then I found that also applying chorus here really helps shape the timbre of the sound. I didn't really change much in the settings, to be honest. I got a mix of 46% here and a rate of 0.1 Hertz. Then of course we added a compressor, which is basically Serum's built-in OTT to bring out more of the sound or up the gain a little bit and put the threshold at minus 18. And yeah, the sound should sound like this. Then in post-processing, I kind of wanted to accentuate some more of those frequencies around 1K. Quite often that is just the juicy, very solid part of a sound. So I accentuated those with an EQ8. I added a glue compressor just to bring out more of the volume. Then I added some just Ableton stock reverb. I did introduce a low cut here because we have a sub bass playing below this and a decay of like less than two seconds essentially. And then again, I applied a low cut with an EQ8 just to get all those frequencies away from that sub bass that will be playing in the background. Then last but not least, I added Duck Buddy, which is once again, a fantastic MIDI sidechain plugin, and all it's doing is it's taking the kick, and in this case, it's taking the snare to sidechain every time that one of these MIDI notes from the drums hits so that we get room for the kick and the bass. All right, then the sub bass, the part that actually glues it all together. Without the sub bass, if you play it, it sounds pretty empty. It sounds cool, but it sounds pretty empty. So what we need is a nice fat sub bass. So this one's very simple, but has got a little trick in it that I like that makes the sub bass a little bit more fat and stronger. I started out with basic shapes and that essentially gives you all the other shapes like the saw wave and the square wave and whatever. But what I did is I went into this editor, I removed all of those. You can do that by clicking one of them and just pressing the minus button. And then I copied a, this sine wave again and I just literally only added stuff in bin three. And what that does is it was down, so it's a perfect sine wave, but if you up it, you can make this wave more like a rounded square almost. 
So this is what I want. And I'm just going to use this option here called normalize so that it makes it louder like this. And then we want to go to morph and crossfade. So it creates a crossfade between those two scenes. And what you can do then is you can go through, through this wavetable morphing and apply an LFO to it. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to apply LFO one and apply it to the wavetable position. And it'll just give us a little bit more of a fatty bass. And in post-production, we're just gonna beef up the sound by adding a saturator at an analog clip, adding a glue compressor, and then taking out some of those highs down here and adding two instances of Duck Buddy so that it makes room for that punch of the kick in the snare. So if we were to up the volume really loud, apart from the mix, it sounds like this. And it clicks a little bit because of Duck Buddy, but you won't hear that in the context of the rest of the song. And we're just using the same MIDI notes here as we do with the rest of the sounds. And together, it sounds like this. See, it already sounds a lot fuller. Right, and then the whoop sound, that's just so juicy and dirty. So in terms of placement, it comes in between everything. So we've got the da 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 and then it's whoop, 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 whoop. We can see here, if we look at the notes of the FM lead, where that ends, there's a gap, then there's the whoop, whoop, whoop sound, and then there's the rest of the lead, and it just keeps repeating like that. And the only time it kind of cuts out is when we have this wait. wait. See, it's, it's not there, so that's, that's the only thing. But for the rest, it keeps going throughout the entire song, basically. All right, so for the web sound, which sounds like this. So I gotta admit, the web 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 sound was really hard to make, but I think I got very close. Originally, it sounds like this. It sounds very underwater. It sounds, yeah, like there's a lot of filter sweeping going on or something. And so let's dive into Serum. Um, actually, it's a pretty simple sound. It's just a lot of modulation going on. So, no sub, no noise oscillator. In oscillator A, we're gonna use acid at minus two semitones because it's a nice weird wavetable. And all we're gonna do is gonna do minus two octaves and then we're gonna modulate it with a bunch of stuff to give it that unique timbre that Headaches has seemed to give into this freaking awesome sound. First of all, what we're gonna do in LFO one, we're gonna create a shape like this. This is what's going to sort of shape that whoop, whoop, whoop sound. I'm going to put it at an eighth note because that's how fast it moves. And we're going to put it on trigger notes so that it triggers every time a new note is hit. And we're going to move that to the wavetable position uh, of the acid wavetable and to the level. And we're going to keep the level low because it sounds better to increase the level after all of the effects have been applied in post-production. Also in LFO 2, we're going to draw a shape like this that we're going to use later at an eighth note and also on trigger mode. Then in effects, first of all, we're going to add a bunch of hyper. Then in effects, we're going to add some dimension. We're actually not adding any hyper, but we are adding a lot of dimension because it's going to contribute to that pretty unique sound. So we're going to modulate it all the way up to 27. Then we're going to apply linear full distortion, which is one of those things that you probably scroll through and think you'll never need it because it sounds so weird. But in this case, it's actually a big contribution to this weird sound that we're getting. Um, and we're going to also use LFO1 to modulate the drive of that sound. Then we want to go and do some filtering, but we want to have a lot of movements in the sound. And so what we're going to do is we're going to use LFO1 again to modulate the cutoff, the resonancy, and the drive. Because essentially with a wub 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 sound, through the sound from start to beginning, there's a lot of movement going on that sort of creates that wub sort of feeling to it. So without this filter, it sounds like this. But with the filter, it sounds like right. Okay, and we're gonna add some OTT because let's face it, we slap OTT on everything. And then last but not least, very important, we're gonna add some EQing. So we don't want those highs. Without the EQ, it sounds like this. You hear that top end kind of crumbling. We don't want that. So we're gonna take out the top end here and we're gonna take out some of these lower mids as well. And we're also gonna make it sweep a little bit. So once again, we're gonna apply LFO1 to the frequency cutoff here. And that creates the whoop sound. And of course, we need also the vocals. One really cool thing that you can do is I use this AI tool called lala.ai. It's a piece of AI software online that essentially just separates the stems or the vocals or the drums or basically any part from an MP3 file and splits it so you can just use that. You literally just go to lala.ai and you can upload your file here and it, you can choose 
what to separate. So it can separate the drums, the bass, the voice, and the noise, electric guitar, pretty much everything. Now, if you want to try this and you want to export the actual end result, you do need to pay them. They have pricing. It's a couple of dollars. If you want to check that out, then I've included a link in the description that gives you a bit of a discount. So what I did was I have this liquor and cigarettes MP3 and I just dragged it into here. And that's pretty much all you have to do. All right, so we've got this main vocal here, which sounds isolated. It sounds like this. And you can see they did a pretty good job. And there's a little bit of beeping in the background that didn't get isolated. And here in the beginning, it's almost pure, almost perfect. And basically, I'm not doing anything crazy to this vocal here. It's essentially good as is. But I did notice that this switch part is different. If you listen to the original song, switch, 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 it sounds distorted and like maybe bit crushed, I thought. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna isolate that little part. And I just made a separate channel and I did two things. I added some saturation just for a little bit of distortion. I found that not a lot was necessary. What really did the trick was adding this Redux, which is Ableton's device for uh, downsampling. And I just played around with these settings a little bit until it sounded more like what we hear in the original sounds. So without these two things, it sounds quite normal and organic. Switch, switch. Quite soft also. Uh, and I wanted to make it more downsampled and saturated. So I use these tools and it sounds like this. Switch, switch. Which sounds a lot more like the original sound. Switch, switch, switch. Cool. Last but not least, I added a down sweeper and an up sweeper just to increase that tension before and after the drop. And one thing that I noticed is that in the original sound, it sounds like after the drop, there's quite a long droning sound. There's a long release. And so what I wanted to do here is I just want to take this white noise. It's not perfect. It's less of a droning sound, but it does do the trick. And I just added this really long reverb to it with a decay of 10 seconds and a bit of a low cut. And essentially it just, you know, this, this sweep is not long enough, but it does drone on now. So even though the volume is going down, see, it's, it's still droning on until it comes back in again. And so, yeah, the finished end product sounds like this. Switch. Alright, that is it. Now, if you enjoyed watching this tutorial and you feel like you learned something and you're interested to see me go even more in depth and to follow along with the creation of an entire song, then maybe I've got something for you. So very soon, I'm going to be releasing two complete follow along courses where I take you from the ideation stage all the way to mixing and mastering of a real professionally produced drum and bass song. And I'm gonna do that in two styles. One of them will be about a new age jump up style drum and bass tune. And the other one will be more like a really powerful dance floor oriented song. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm gonna pack so much value into these courses that they're not gonna be cheap. But if you feel like you might be interested in checking that out, then I'm gonna leave a link in the description where you can pre-register. You don't have to pay anything. Just by showing early interest, I'm going to give you a 50% discount on the course in the first couple days that it releases. Now, I, I can't promise that I'll be doing this for very long. So maybe by the time you watch this video, that promotion is already over. So if I were you, I would go check it out really, really quickly. Anyhow, so that was the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you learned something, smash the subscribe button. It really helps the channel and helps me make more content for you. And uh, let me know in the comments what were the most valuable things were that you learned in today's session. All right, hope you're having a fantastic day and I'll see you in the next video.